good morning from me and from the cat. After a really busy January and start to February, I think I'm going to take a couple of days to take things just a little bit slower and to get some reading done. I am just about to finish Motherhood by Sheila Hetty. I've only got a few pages left. It has been incredible so far. I couldn't recommend it enough. So I'm gonna finish that, have my morning tea. The rest of the day consists of doing some yoga, going for a walk. I'm gonna try pop into one of the um, local bookstores this afternoon, maybe pick something up and also choosing my next read. Back to Sheila. Are you having a good time in there? Okay, I'll leave you in peace. Yeah. So I'm just finishing getting ready to go meet my friend for coffee and I was thinking maybe this could be my next read. No one is talking about this by Patricia Lockwood. Um, my sister loaned me this copy and she said it was meh. She loved the concept but didn't really like how it was executed and we read mostly the same books so that has me thinking that I might not love it but I might enjoy parts of it. However, Carrie Ann Bradley, I love to watch her vlog. She said that this was her favorite book of 2021, no, 2020 maybe? Yeah, 2020. And she said it was really funny and she just really, really loved it. And I think we have very similar tastes. That has me thinking, maybe I will love it. I think this is a maybe, a maybe baby. Jesus Christ, I need to wash my hair, but it is, Pouring rain outside, so it just seems like that would be a wasted effort. I'm in bed, moisturized to the high heavens. The bookstore I was going to go to today was closed, so it looks like this will be my next read. We'll start it tonight and we'll see how it goes. Going to have some breakfast. I have some stewed apples with cardamom and cinnamon, granola and yogurt, and read a few more pages of this, which I started last night and I'm not loving, but, excuse the washing machine in the background, I'm not loving, but I'm willing to see where this takes me. Where are you gonna take me, Patricia? Okay, I have had quite a slow morning, but I have read a chunk of no one is talking about this. I'm not yet loving it, but I am kind of understanding more why it's been written the way that it's written. And it is very interesting and I do have thoughts about it. I've had a very chill morning so far, actually. Just reading, did my laundry, washed my hair. Um, the plan is to go out for a walk go through the park, get some sunshine. I think it should stay dry, but it has been raining this morning. Also, I don't know if you can hear the wind, but it is really windy right now. So I'll wrap up warm and then see if Out With Books is open. Have a little look around, maybe pick something up. But yeah, just relaxing until work this evening. Oh baby, was that cold. Oh my god. Look at these flyaways. 
that was a brisk walk, but we got a book. Wow. We got a book. The bookstore was open. We got Mona. I'm looking forward to it. I love the cover. Look at this. Look how red my little hands are. It is freezing outside. It's time for a cup of tea. Okay, so I'm slightly more than halfway through now. I've finished part one and so far, oh, hello. Yeah, do you wanna come sit on my lap? And so far, my thoughts are pretty much the same. I don't love it, but I do think it's very interesting what Patricia Lockwood is doing. We have an unnamed narrator and she is a writer who has become famous because of tweets of hers going viral. The way that book one is presented is through this form which is just these fragments, like everything's very short. I think it's supposed to like mirror you know, the limited characters that we have when posting on the internet because it is all about the portal, which is the internet. A lot of what she's writing is about language and communication and how our reactions to everything are changing because of the long exposure that we've had to the internet and how communication and humor is almost becoming homogenous. Everyone uses the same phrases, everyone finds the same things funny and this language, this style of communication, this humour permeates everything that you read and so is anything original anymore? Are we all just repeating what someone else is saying? You're caught in that cycle and you're going deeper and deeper. I think what she's saying is one side of the internet. It is having that effect on us, especially if you are a hyper online person. But I don't think it speaks to the communities that people find on the internet that they can't really access in real life and how those communities have given them the support and love they deserve but can't find immediately around them. But that's not really what she's talking about. She is more talking about how overexposure to the internet has affected how we communicate with each other and how we think about things and our reactions to things. I think that it's not really my cup of tea. Like I'm not a hyper online person. Part one is full of internet references. I think if you're someone that's like really, really online, then you would probably find this a lot more relatable and maybe a lot funnier than how I'm finding it. But I do think it's really clever and I appreciate the form that she's chosen to convey her message in because it just makes sense. I'm looking forward to part two. I've heard that part two is more about relationships and um, like mother and daughter and things like that. I am looking more forward to part two than I was for part one anyway. Does that sentence even make sense? Looking forward to part two. I could probably finish this tonight if I like really tried. As I said, I had a really busy start to the year, so I'm just trying to go a little bit slower for a couple of days. I did go to Out With Books, it was open, and I picked up Mona, and I'm very excited to start that. How good is this cover? I love it, I love it. It's so good. Yeah, I've heard a lot of good things about this. I've heard that it's quite dark and, you know, moody and broody is what we're all about here. Are you aware you're doing that on camera? Okay. I do not think I can express to you how happy I am that the sun is here. She's shining. Scottish winters are, oh my God, they are bleak. They are gray, they are cold, they are very difficult. So when she comes to play, oh my God. Yes, yes, we love the sun. We love the sun, there, let me, oh, I love you.
Hi, I finished No One Is Talking About This. I'm now at my boyfriend's for the weekend, so I thought I would steal some time to come and talk to you about my experience reading it. Did I love it? No, I did not. Am I glad I read it? Yeah, I am glad I read it because you know what? Everyone was talking about this. Everyone was talking about this book and I kind of wanted to see if I would enjoy it as much as other people have, as much as people whose taste is similar to mine have. So I had finished part one when I last spoke to you, I think. And then this morning I read part two, much better, or much more to my taste anyway. Part one, we have our narrator. She is a writer and speaker. She's kind of gone viral on the internet. It was reading like a series of tweets. There were so many internet references. The concept of language and communication was being woven and discussed throughout it and it was really clever what was being done and how it was being done and I did appreciate that. Part two, oh my goodness, so much better. In part one, our narrator and other people that she meets in the portal, the internet, they do question, is this all there is? Are we in hell here? And I know that we can all have that feeling from overexposure to the internet and consuming so much social media and so much news and it does kind of feel like, oh my god, this is all there is. But then at the beginning of part two, she received two texts from her mum that something has gone wrong. And suddenly the tone of writing really changes, the pace really changes, and there's so much more human connection, emotions, and sisterly love and motherly love coming together. It was really beautiful and because of all this our narrator begins to realize that yes there is more out there, there is love, there is goodness. I don't want to give much away but it got me. I almost shed a couple of tears. It was really beautiful. I do have to say that when I was reading it, even in part one, there were some sentences that were so beautiful. They had this gorgeous lyricism to them. And so I had to check. Patricia Lockwood is a poet. And you probably already knew this, but I did not. I'm just really happy to find that out because I love when poets write novels. It is like my favorite thing. Tell me a poet's re written a novel, then I will read it. <laughs> it was an experience I think I needed to have with that book, but I wouldn't reread it. I would recommend it to someone that is way more online than I am because they would definitely connect with the content and the references so much more than I did. Maybe I felt like I was like missing out on something a little bit because I only kind of connected to that side of it, but even though I wouldn't reread it and it wasn't exactly my kind of book, I did really enjoy the concept, appreciate what she was doing and how she was doing it. I thought it was very clever. Was my experience maybe slightly dampened because I read it immediately after the masterpiece that is Sheila Hetty's Motherhood? Quite possibly. <laughs> What's interesting is I read those two books back to back, not realizing that they're written in the same form. So they're both written in fragments of writing. In Sheila Hetty's book, it feels very like diary entries, like she's having a very personal discourse with herself and like figuring it out through these entries. In No One Is Talking About This, it felt very much like the oversharing, posting on the internet and I just thought it was really interesting that those two forms could really convey something very different and that I read them back to back without even planning that. If you've read No One Is Talking About This, I would really be interested in hearing your thoughts. I really want to have a conversation about this book. Does that mean I liked it more than I think that I did? Because I really want to talk about it? I don't know. But if you've read it, let me know because I would like to talk about this book. Let me know what you've been reading this week. I would be interested also to know if you have read Motherhood by Sheila Hetty, although it feels like I'm the last person on the planet to have read it. If you haven't read it, I would highly, highly recommend it. Maybe it just really spoke to me as a woman in her 30s. So many questions in there that I think needed to be in the conversation about motherhood. And I think it speaks for a lot of people. So yeah, I'd be very interested to also know if you've read that. <laughs> Thank you for watching. 
I will see you next time. I love you. I appreciate you. Mm.